Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another ship fitting guide for Eve Echoes. This time around though, we're doing things a little bit differently. If you're a regular on this channel, you'll know that I tend to try and base my ship fitting guides off the actual statistics and ideas, the skill bonuses, etc, that the ships, etc, themselves actually suggest. So for example, if a ship has bonuses to medium railguns, I'm going to fit medium railguns on it. If it says micro warp drives, I'm going to try and cram a micro warp drive in there somewhere. Today, we're completely ignoring all of that on this particular ship and just having a bit of fun to see does this actually work. And spoiler alert, yeah it does and it works surprisingly well. So, this idea was actually pitched to me by a guy in the YouTube comments. I think his name was Kyle. He contacted me in-game as well. I could not find the actual DMs for the life of me. So my sincerest apologies for not having a proper full-screen shout-out going on here. But I could not find the details, no matter how hard I looked. I think an update has lost something somewhere. But the concept was really interesting. And he said, look, you've got access to Fulmination. Can you jump on there and just see, does this actually work? Because I love crazy fits like this. Does this work? work. So that's exactly what I've done. So today's video, just so you're aware, is on the Fulmination Content Creator Test Server. I do have Basic 5, Advanced 5, and Expert 5 in every single skill in EVE Echoes. Every skill. Every single one of them. So do bear that in mind as we go forward. But that said, this is a particularly cheap fit. It's also a surprisingly useful stopgap. If you've been a cruiser pilot and you're looking to train into large weapons, this makes a nice little middle ship that you can use using those new skills while still benefiting from your old ones too. So I do hope you guys really enjoy this one. It's just a little bit crazy, a little bit off the wall, and I hope you have as much fun watching this as I did making it. Now, if you do enjoy the video, please do let me know by hitting a like on it. It does really help the channel out. If you're a regular here and want to see more of this kind of content, please subscribe by clicking down below. Ding that notification bell to make sure you never miss an update because I do upload Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday with new Eve Echoes content every week with bonus videos occasionally on Saturday and Sunday if I have the time to actually put one out. If you want to go the extra mile to help support this channel as well, you can do so either by joining us on Patreon, pledging to support there. Even a dollar really does help and helps this channel keep running and turning over. And we have a Redbubble merchandise store, which you can check in the description down below as well. If you fancy rocking a Catskull Academy t-shirt or something like a water bottle, stickers, all that kind of thing down there. Anyway, folks, all that said and done then, let's jump into talking about putting large missiles onto an Omen Sniper. If we're being completely honest, then the concept of this ship was born out of the could we do it school of thought, rather than the should we do it camp. And whilst this is an absolute abomination of a ship, you know what? It actually works, and it's not a bad ship at all for a couple of reasons. One, if you're a cruiser pilot and you're looking to upgrade into something like a Raven or a Typhoon, and thus you're training the large missile skills, this is a great little stopgap that's still going to allow you to use your cruiser skills whilst those large missiles are training. Two, the modules that we're using are remarkably cheap. They're mainly Mark 7s, etc., and so they're things that people tend to want to throw away. You'll find them absolutely dirt cheap on the market, and you'll often find them just lying at the bottom discarded into your corporation's corporation hangers. So do check around, ask if anyone wants those. If not, grab them up and fit this ship. As I said, it's an abomination, but it's kind of fun, it will surprise people in PvP, and it actually works really well in PvE. Anyway, let's jump into the Amar Empire ship tree and have a look then at the Omen Sniper, which is of course a Tech 8 cruiser. Now, the ship itself, I'll be honest, it's not one of my favourite designs. Like most of our ships, it's a little bit too ostentatious and a little bit too curvy for my personal tastes. I like my ships to look a bit more rugged, a bit more sort of streamlined, and so for me, Minmatar and Kaldari do tend to win the day here. It's not a bad ship by any stretch, and I've got to say, the Snowfield Adventure skin is pretty dapper on it. It's, you know, quite a vibrant skin there. The Halorange from the Crimson Harvest last October for Halloween works really nicely, very vibrant ship, but if we're going to be completely honest, the Dawn skin from the recent hunt just blows these away. Like, look, I don't care what your opinion of the hunt is, otherwise, it has to be said that the skins that were put up at that point in time, these Dawn skins, are absolutely magnificent, and the Omen Sniper just looks stunning in that sort of fading metallic blue into the soft snowy white, with those white accents and details like at the, uh, the prow there and along the top of the ship. It is a stunning little skin. 
Anyway, let's have a look at the Omen Sniper's attributes and fittings then. First of all, its fitting profile. We have one drone tube that can launch small or medium drones and is purely there for supplemental damage. We have five high slots, three mid slots, five low slots, and then three each of the combat rigs and engineering rigs. Now what helps this build work is that absolutely monstrous 1020 megawatts of power grid output. And of course, that's before we start looking into any cruiser engineering skills. Now, when I first started playing around with the Omen Sniper back when we all hit Tech 8, I did notice there was a lot of spare power grid, but I hadn't considered this at all. It was only recently when a guy called Kyle in my YouTube comments um, contacted me and suggested I m might want to try this, then contacted me in game and said, hey, check this out. If you're on Fulmination, see if this works. I'd love to know. Well, I'm here and I'm happy to say, yeah, it really does. Our defences for a cruiser are not bad at all. Um, we're looking at 11,312, the majority of which is in armour, of course. It's in a Marship, they're heavily armoured, 3,586. They tend to be fairly light on the shields, 2,435, but a decent amount of structure at 2,930. Ultimately, it's a fairly solid cruiser. It's not the tankiest out there by any stretch, but it's certainly not as fragile as plenty of other ones out there in New Eden either. Its capacitor bank, being in a Marship, is also incredibly healthy, 4,128 gigajoules, which allows us to shield tank this thing, because we don't give a crap that ultimately shield tanking uses more um, capacitor, it's more capacitor hungry than armour tanking, because the capacitor can handle it, it is more than capable of handling it, so, you know, we go for the one that has the higher resists and the higher heals per second, thus we shield tank it. Yes, it's in a Marship, yes I know, they're traditionally supposed to be armour tanked, until that's fixed, Fixed, they are going to be shield tanked. Anyway, we've got a fairly small signature radius for a cruiser. There are some destroyers around about this size, 94.7 meters. Scan resolution of 393 is on the lower end of things, but it locks on at a fairly reasonable rate. Warp speed is average at 3.0, and the mass and inertia give you a somewhat agile cruiser. It's, again, middling to agile as far as cruisers go. It's not so much on the slower end of things, but it's a pretty solid ship across the board. It's just that power grid that is absolutely monstrous. Now, of course, if we have a look at the skills here on the Omen Sniper, it benefits from Advanced Cruiser Command, giving it a 5% inertia modifier reduction, so a 25% reduced inertia modifier, and Advanced Medium Laser Upgrade gives it 10% reduction to medium laser capacitor need, and a 3% reduction to medium laser activation time. We're not going to give a damn about these. As I said, the idea here is that perhaps you've been flying things like Caracals, um, maybe you've even had a look at things like the Drake, um, you've been training into cruiser, maybe some battle cruiser skills here and there, and you're now looking to go up into large missiles. This is a great little stop, stop gap. I'm not expecting you to have medium laser skills. You don't need them. We're not here for medium lasers. We're here for large missiles. And what type of large missiles, you ask? Well, of course, we're going for Mark 7 large rapid missile launchers. Yes, just Mark 7s. We're aiming to keep this fit fairly cheap, so most of the stuff here is very much on the cheaper end of things, and with these, we're getting a good solid 513.36 DPS cold out of this. Being large rapid missile launchers, they're basically medium missile launchers that fire twice as fast, which is pretty sweet. It means they've got a fairly you know, consistent explosion radius and explosion velocity. They apply fairly well to small targets and medium targets. They apply very well to medium targets, in fact. Um, against large targets, you're going to be doing that full-on damage there. So basically, anything cruiser or larger, you're going to basically be doing that full 513.36 DPS. We've also got a pretty good range out of these, 36.89 kilometers. Yeah, of course, I am on Fulmination right now, which means I've got 555 in every single blasted skill in the game, so you do have to take this with a pinch of salt. So you're probably going to get slightly lower DPS, unless you're all the way trained up into large missiles, um, and you might not have quite the same range, but it is still a long-range weapon that is doing a good amount of damage without any ship bonuses relevant to it whatsoever. Now, because they are essentially medium missiles, yes, they don't apply quite as well to small ships like frigates and destroyers. That's where we have two Mark 7 target painters coming in. Now, if we're sitting at the optimum range here of our large rapids, we're at the same optimal range here for the target painters. So they're increasing the signature radius by a 33.73% increase. So you're looking about 150% increase on the signature radius of your target ship once those two are combined, which is pretty useful 
and it means that those large rapids are going to suddenly be applying against all but the smallest of frigates. And just in case you do need to slow something down, or if you want to do a bit of PvP with this ship, a Mark 7 Warp Scrambler is a great way to do this. Of course you can go for a Warp Disruptor as well if you want that extra bit of range. Um, in fairness, either way it kind of works. There's the, the downside of the Disruptor is that it's only going to be Warp Strength 1, so they're likely to be able to escape, whereas the uh, Warp Scrambler, it's Warp Jammer Strength 3, but only at a range of 11.8 kilometers, so you do have to be pretty close um, to actually get that one to work. That said, if you're part of something like a gate camp with your friends, someone else can point it, you are going to do absolutely monstrous damage with this thing, and people will look at it and go, oh, it's an Omen Sniper. I know what kind of weapon they've got. They've assumed you're going to have lasers, and they will try to get under your guns, at which point you open up with the large missiles and just go to town on them. For the low slots here, I've gone from Mark 7 Medium Shield Booster to Mark 7 Ad uh, Adaptive Invulnerability Fields, and that provides our tank and some really good resistances. That means this survives really well in PvE. And um, for PvP, you might want to train uh, change these around depending on what you're doing. We'll come to that in a second. Um, and then a Mark 7 Ballistic Control System is, of course, our weapon upgrade module. We're getting an increase to our damage um, just by having it fitted, and you can activate it for a massive increase of damage for a short period of time. Finally then in the low slots, a Mark 7 medium micro warp drive allows us to relocate from A to B nice and quickly. Considering we're ultimately in PvE wanting to sit around the 30km margin, there's no real reason to try and speed tank with this. So we're not going to leave the micro warp drive running most of the time, it's just there to make sure that we maintain sort of 30km range at all times. Now, if you're going into PvE, um, this is a fairly solid setup, but if you want to go into PvP, depending on who you're with and what you're doing, you may want to mix things around a bit. If you're in a gate camp, for example, then you might not even need the micro warp drive, and you can just add an additional Mark 7, you know, an additional ballistic control system. Heck, you might decide that you don't need two adaptive invulnerability fields, so you're going to take one of those off, and you'll just go with, again, another ballistic control system. You can even go for a guidance computer there to add some extra range and some extra application, but it's entirely up to you. This is a very basic setup, designed primarily with PvE in mind, but can do surprisingly well in PvP. Now, for the rigs, this is where the magic happens. As you can see, none of these are higher than Tech 1 rigs. We have three ancillary power grid routers, which just give us that little bit extra power grid to cram in the full Mark 7s and some of the other more heavy devices down, especially in the tanking, like the shield booster and the micro warp drive. Um, but ultimately, again, you can go for like a higher grid version one of these, so like the Mark 2 or even the Mark 3 if you have a bit of spare cash going around, just to prop it up that way. I just went for the three of these because that is sufficient enough to get through there. If you don't quite have uh, your cruiser engineering as high as I do, then it might be worth having a look at just downgrade, you know, upgrading some of those to twos um, to allow that fit. You might need a bit more power grid than I'm requiring here on those three. On the other side of things, however, two bay loading accelerators and the warhead calefaction catalyst ensure that we're doing as good DPS as we can. Again, these are all just Mark 1s. Nothing special here. We basically have our two collision, uh, our two burst aerators and our collision accelerator, but the missile versions, which are, of course, bay loading and warhead calefaction catalyst. Thank you for whoever put that meme up on Reddit. I do love it. I have genuinely printed it out, and I'm going to try and find a little frame for it somewhere because I've just laughed my head off so much at it. Ultimately, this gives us, as I said, 513.36 def uh, offense. Our, our defense is solid at 17,429. That's before we activate either of the adaptive invulnerability fields. That does shoot right the way up with both of those active. Both our, all our resistances sit at around the 70% mark, which is pretty solid. The capacitor lies to you. It says that it's 2 minutes 54 seconds, but of course that's with everything running. And for the most part, we're not going to need to have the shield booster running for a long time, and we're definitely not going to need to have that micro warp drive running the entire time. These are just little things that we pop on when we need to. Thus, we are actually a lot more capacitor stable than it looks. For targeting, I'm sitting on a scan resolution here of 511 millimeters, which allows us to lock on nice and quickly, which is pretty nice there. Seven maximum locked targets, useful in PvE. And for our basic max velocity, 323.35 is surprisingly nippy for a cruiser, as I said. That's before we activate the micro warp drive and go to town on things. So I think those are fairly solid stats, but I want to showcase this in action just to make sure that you guys agree with me.
This is a standard Tech 8 encounter out in a Mars space. I'm currently in Anad, which is a 0.8 system, in Corazor, and I'm doing one of the ones that I think it's like mining area safety concern or something, and it actually, for some reason, puts a load of the Pithy, the Kaldari ships out there, which is pretty cool because it's now missiles versus missiles, and we can see how this works with things like the guidance disruptors on us as well. I'm coming to the end of the first wave here. Down goes that Pith and Moa Guardian 2, or Moa 2 Guardian, and we lock on to the next wave. Now straight away here, I can see that we've got a Blackbird, another Moa 2 Guardian, a Korax C or Korax Command, we've got two of those, a Naga in the distance, and a Caracal, probably a Caracal Sniper. Now we're going to take out these Command Destroyers first of all, which means we're going to put those uh, target painters on, we're then going to activate the large rapid missile launchers, and you'll see that even against something like a, a Pithy Korax C, we're able to do a decent amount of damage. What's mainly doing the damage here is the drone, but you'll see that when that missile like actually hits, we do get a nice smack of damage. You see, there we are. It's not a huge amount, as I said. When it comes to the faster, slow, uh, faster, smaller ships, this is always going to struggle, but when you get a nice smack on it like that, the damage does apply really nastily. You can see there that Korax C is about to go up in smoke, probably in this next volley. Should hopefully take it out. Possibly it'll be the one directly after this volley. Either way, it's going down at a rate that I'm fairly happy with. It's not humongously fast, as I'm not trying to tell you this is the best darn ship in Echoes. It's not. It's a bit of fun to be had trying something out that's a little bit crazy. We're going to go on to the second Korak C now. Same thing. We're going to put those two target painters on there. Um, I've got my adaptive invulnerability fields running. We are also still on the uh, the, guide, uh, the ballistic control computer. is still active there. I'm going to turn the shield booster off, though, because I don't need that. You see, that's a much bigger hit there. Because we're a little bit further away, this is a slower moving ship, um, and it's thus able to apply its damage a little bit better. That goes down very quickly, but now we're onto the cruiser size targets. First one here with the Blackbird E War Cruiser. These are actually sm on the smaller end of cruisers, so when it comes to their signature radius, you know, you're looking at something that ultimately most cruisers are larger than this, so the missiles would apply better to larger cruisers, as you'll see in a few. But again, we're doing a fair whack of damage. I've moved uh, with my micro warp drive there to keep myself at a good range. I am being hit with a guidance computer, which is going to shorten my missile, missile range and increase the explosion velocity as well. So in fairness, this should probably have been my first target, simply to get rid of that electronic warfare, reduce my explosion radius, and I would have therefore done better against those two small ships. But hey, we're going to take it down now, and you can see each volley from, the, uh, from those missiles does do surprisingly well. It's a good whack of damage on every hit, and I think the Naga is going to be the next one we go for. So you can see in the distance there, there it is, there's that Blackbird, 1,294 damage from that volley. Next volley should take it out. Boom, didn't even get a chance to, Drone finished it off, and now on to the Naga. So we need to get into range there. You can see I'm drifting closer, 36 kilometers should be in range. We've got all of our target painters on, I'm just going to activate a single cycle there of the shield booster just to top things up because I can. We've got the ballistic control system online, and you'll see that once we're in range, 2,000 damage from those large missiles. That's a good whack of damage against the ship like this, and it is doing a fair dent. Considering how cheap this ship is, and how you're not skilling into anything remotely relevant to it, as I said, it makes a great stopgap. If, for example, you've been using Caracals and Blackbirds yourself, or maybe the Bellicose, and you're looking to go up into large missiles, now um, that you can get access to the Raven or the or the Typhoon, for example, and you're training into those large missile skills, then just keep your cruiser skills and you can use this in the meantime as a great way of doing some extra damage and having some fun with those large missiles. As I said, to me, the theory here is more of a can it be done rather than should it be done, but certainly for PvP, people are going to massively underestimate this ship and just not going to accept what this can do. They're going to assume that you're running lasers because it's an omen, and everyone runs lasers on an omen, right? Because that's what it's skilled for. It says right there, and if you've made it all the way to Tech 8, you surely know that lasers go on an omen. Then you open fire with five large rapid missile launches, and you do an astonishing amount of damage to enemy cruisers. Um, your alpha damage is pretty, uh, like, pretty on point there. You can see these mowers are going down like flies. 
pop, there goes that one, and we're on to the next Pythom, Moa 2 Guardian, and so on, so forth. Very little damage being taken from this encounter, it'll run the Tech 9s quite comfortably as well. Yes, there are other ships that do it faster, but this was just a bit of fun to see. Can an Omen Sniper carry an entire fuselage of large rapid missiles and actually do well with it? And the answer is a resounding, yes it can. It's an astonishing, yes it can. I actually had a lot of fun doing this because it was such a weird, wacky fit. It was, I think, you know, just sort of, I'm having fun doing this kind of thing, like with the Hurricane Logistics, um, I've got a build coming up with the Osprey, so I will be showing that one off soon as well. Um, I just quite like these wacky little builds that are completely off the wall, not at all what you would expect it. I think it's Creamy who came up with the absolutely excellent crew or that uses missiles and webs um, just to completely throw your opponent off, and one day I will do a video on that as well. Um, so big shout out to him, I wanted to give him a massive head start on that, but I do want to cover it and talk about it myself because I think it's such an interesting ship. So look out for that one in the near future. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching this one right the way to the end. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this absolutely crazy ship. As I said, it's an abomination, but it is surprisingly good fun. And you know what? There are Amar ships in EVE Online that use missiles and rockets. So, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe we can just pretend that that's what we're referencing, right? We're being the cool kids and playing Amar ships the wrong way, ironically. <laughs> anyway, folks, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.